Welcome to another episode of the Underground Bunker Podcast. This is your proprietor, Tony Ortega. And once again, I'm joined by Mark Bunker, who is on fire this week. How you doing, Mr. Vice Mayor? Hey, I'm doing great. It is nerve-wracking as we come close to Election Day on March 19th. Uh, it's down to the wire, and it's going to be a tight race. I sure hope well, we win. You you have been a city councilman now in Clearwater for uh, a term, and you're up for re-election. And early voting's already started, right? It has. It has. And, you know, I'm hearing from people who voted for me and telling their friends they're voting for me. Uh, you know, we haven't done any polling, so I, I'm not sure where we are in the race. But it is going to be tight because uh, we've got Scientology going against me. And we have the establishment running a candidate against me with tons of money. Uh, and so you look around the streets of Clearwater. Um, my opponent's signs are everywhere. Mine are hard to find now. Well, I wanted to ask you a dumb question because I haven't I haven't run for anything and I haven't helped out a campaign. On a local campaign like this, city council, how much of your budget is just for yard signs. What what how substantial is that in your budget? Well, uh, yard signs are actually relatively inexpensive. I think we paid maybe um for the 400 that we made uh, uh, maybe $2000. Um but the the loss of the signs that have been stolen in, in a widespread campaign uh, it's not the monetary value of the signs. They're about five dollars and uh, and thirty cents a piece. But the loss of those impressions of people driving down the street, not seeing your name and seeing your opponent's name everywhere, uh, is what really is is hurtful, and that you can't place a a, a price on. I think um, the idea of yard signs being stolen in a local election is fairly uh, common. But when did you start to suspect that it was unusual this time? It was unusually heavy, and you thought maybe Scientology was behind it. I, I assume it struck you. That was probably the first thing that came to your mind, right? That's, that's the first thing that comes to most people's minds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I had some signs, uh, go missing and, um, I had a few go missing in my first campaign, but nothing like this. Um, it, I, I noticed the, um, the theft on, um, I guess it would have been February 11th. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's the, the date stamp on the video, I had gone up to uh, Newark. Actually, I flew up there and was doing a podcast in person in Hoboken. Uh, so I flew up in the morning, flew back in the evening. And as I was driving home, I noticed, hey, all my signs are gone throughout uh, all of Gulf to Bay. And then I turned down my uh, street, which is MLK Boulevard. And I had signs in front of my attorney's office on that block and uh, a few other places down the block. So all along the route to my home, they were gone. Uh, and that's unusual to see them all gone. And, and in some places, my opponent's signs uh, took their place. So I wasn't sure if this was Scientology or if this was an opponent or, right. you know, yeah fans of the opponent or uh, a, a certain party um i wasn't sure so i wanted to i wanted to find out and a couple days later i heard from um one of the other council members who's running for mayor right now she said oh you know this woman imani over in north greenwood she's she's got a, a video of the signs being stolen uh, so I contacted Imani, the uh, the woman who had the ring camera, and drove over there quickly and took a look at it. And and yeah, uh, you know, at 12, 13 in the morning, uh, here's a white pickup uh, going through the streets. Uh, one guy is on the sidewalk grabbing the signs and only picking up my signs. 
there were signs for a couple other candidates in the yard, the same yard, but he didn't bother those. Uh, picked up those signs and threw them in the back of the truck and they moved on to the next. So I got that over to the, the Clearwater police and I gave him the locations up and down the streets that I had placed some signs or I had seen some signs all the way up uh, Gulf to Bay and all the way down Drew and other places. And the, the names of uh, and addresses of, of uh, people who called me to, to say, hey, my signs were stolen. So they could kind of chart the route that the guy was uh, taken, the guys. And uh, they managed to, to get his um, the, uh, license peg uh, through one of the uh, traffic cameras. And they followed him around a bit on the route. Uh, and they identified uh, what initially was a father and son team when the police first informed me, okay, we caught them. Uh, dad owns a truck. The son uh, was involved as well. But when the police actually went out then to talk to them, the father wasn't involved. It was the son who used the dad's truck. It was another friend who had called this guy to say, hey, you got a truck. There's this SP running for office. Let's go grab us some signs. And so, yeehaw, they got in the uh, truck and uh, roamed through the streets for a few hours and, and picked up everyone they could. Um, and I'm pretty much out of signs. I've replaced a few of them. I only have a couple left. So it, it's done great damage. Uh, uh, on the other side, we are getting publicity for it. So uh, hopefully the people who aren't seeing my signs will know Mark Bunker had his sign stolen by Scientologists. And this was something I wanted to find out from the police because I didn't know, Scientologist opponent. So I said, I just want to find out who did it and why. And uh, they asked if I wanted to, to charge these guys. And I said, no, they confessed. They, they, they laid out the whole story. Um, and you know, we got their names and and they said they did it because they're all Scientologists and I am an anti-Scientologist. And they didn't like that I was speaking out about Scientology. So what more do you need? Um, they and, thought and you were running for mayor. Put... Yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, but listen, that's not an unusual thing. It's especially difficult because I'm vice mayor right now. You know, when I'm knocking on doors and saying I'm running for the council, everybody thinks I'm the mayor and running for mayor. No, no, I'm, I'm running for the city council again. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I'm sure these guys don't know who I am, really. Um, uh, the, the main guy who is running through the yards, he's probably related to someone who knows me well and I know him well. Um, but, you know, they may have never heard a thing that I've said or, or seen a video or, or anything. They just know I'm an SP because after all, Scientology has been alerting every Scientologist in Clearwater that this is an important election, get out there and vote and strike an effective blow. So I'm, I'm assuming they just thought, well, here's how I can help. Well, and that's that's the reaction of, for a lot of my readers. And I, I pointed out uh, Tracy McManus's uh, great story about all this was um, a lot of my readers were saying this has to be OSA, this, the Church of Scientology spy wing itself. The way you describe it, I kind of feel like it's just a couple of young Scientologists that decided on their own, let's go do this thing. Um, what do you think? Well, that's, I mean, that's likely the case. I, I haven't uh, talked to them. They're supposed to be writing a check to the campaign to reimburse me for the, the 25 signs they, they say they took. Uh, I think they took more um, because it's stretched through quite a region. Um, right. But, you know, I, I'm sure this wasn't, uh, you know, a, a, a major campaign run by uh, David Miscavige himself. Uh, um, you know, people steal signs all the time. I got my answer. Of course, it's Scientology. I wasn't yeah. sure, but, you know, it's nice to know. 
and you know, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to have them arrested or because the, the most they'd get is like, a, uh, you know, they, they'd have to do some public service probably for it. It's a misdemeanor. And, and so just having them confess and, and, you know, explain what happened is good enough for me. Well, and also look, I mean, the publicity is huge, especially right at this crucial time. I mean, the election is only a week from Tuesday. And also it just, you know, look, is there a better advertisement that Mark Bunker is effective at what he's doing that, yeah. the, you know, Scientologists are really unhappy with what's going on. And let's go through a few of these things. You know, you and I, over the last you know year or so, I've been talking about some progress that's actually being made in this yeah. town that Scientology literally creeped into surreptitiously in 1975 and began taking over and is locked out of the downtown and kept it from developing the way other local towns there have. Please tell us again, what are some of the things that have happened since you were elected uh, in 2020, um, that's, you know, ch uh, changed the tide there in Clearwater and begun to bring it out of its Scientology sleepwalking. Yeah, after close to 50 years, we are finally making some progress. It's a start, but it's an important start. We spent $84 million on Imagine Clearwater. That's the complete revamping of our waterfront uh, park coachman park it greatly expanded it it's beautiful we have a new 4000 seat amphitheater that we opened there which uh, uh the the major medical um company in town behind most of the hospitals baycare they just uh announced their sponsorship of it so it's now called the baycare sound and that's big here. Everybody knows Bay Care, and to have their names behind it, as they do with the Phillies ballpark as well, it's Bay Care Ballpark. Um, that gives us a lot of legitimacy. And that's huge. That's so huge. we're bringing we're bringing tens of thousands of people down there for the concerts. Problem is, when they get down there, there's not much to do. We've got like five restaurants open. And the rest of the buildings are, are are pretty much empty. But we just did finally um, sign our agreement with this developer from New York, Gotham, uh, and working with a local developer, the Dundunzio Group. Uh, Gotham's putting up uh, 400 apartments uh, on the waterfront right next to the park. And Dundunzio Group is putting up um, a hotel a boutique hotel and uh, there's going to be uh retail on the ground floor there's going to be restaurants uh and a beer garden none of these things will be owned or controlled by scientology and we have specific language in the contract with these developers that they cannot just sell it to scientology at some point if things go bad the city has the first option of what we're going to do with that property um, to, uh, that, that was incredibly important to us. Now there's another developer who was vying for that same Gotham property. And he said, you know what, uh, I'm going to bring the 350 apartments and retail, uh, to downtown still just a couple blocks away. So we'll have more people living and working downtown that will make it more feasible for people to actually open up a business. And there are two guys who have been working so hard and spending so much money. They were not familiar with Clearwater, except they really liked the city. And they thought, well, here, this is promising. They're not Scientologists, but they've been very successful uh, up north with a, a, a dueling piano bar. Uh, and they wanted to recreate that here. And they've done it. They put like $2 million of their own money into uh, fixing up one block of Cleveland Street that Scientology doesn't own. There's one side of it that is owned by a Greek woman who has been sitting on the properties herself and not doing anything. 
So, I mean, they're risking money uh, to develop these properties uh, that they don't even own. Um, so they have plans to stay here and make this successful. And, uh, and it has been, I've, I visited, um, uh, their, their properties. They're, they're in a, um, temporary spot now while they're finalizing their, their main spot just uh, down the block. Um, but the place is hopping and, uh, they've, uh, fixed up all of these decrepit, uh, buildings and, restored them and put stores into them. There are no businesses in there yet, but they plan to get businesses in there. So my God, that's a huge help because, uh, you know, they, they did not know what they were up against. They were kind of surprised with, with Scientology. Um, but we're, we're doing everything we can to help them now be successful. So these guys are putting a couple million dollars of their own money to try to get this block you know, uh, going again. And meanwhile, how many how many years has it been now that David Miscavige said that they were going to be cleaning up these storefronts on down down that area? And has any of that been yeah, going on? Tony, it's only been eight years. <laughs> I mean, you know, give them time. How long does it take to build a a, a superpower building? It, it, it took uh, what? 13 years, 15 years, something like that. Uh, yeah, so give them a break, will you? <laughs> it would it would be nice to have some answers, but of course, we're never going to get any answers. And every week, right now, they're waiting out the election because Scientology is hoping to get rid of me. And the establishment is kind of hoping to get rid of me too. So uh, they're they're all gunning for me. Uh, but thankfully, I've got a lot of support in the community this time. I've got the backing of the police FOP and the Clearwater firefighters and all sorts of people throughout the community who weren't sure of me when I ran the first time, but have come up to me and said, you know, we've been watching. You really care about the neighborhoods and and I'm voting for you. I'm telling all my friends to vote for you. So hopefully we'll we'll. Um, went out in the end because uh, I'd hate to see the progress that we've made be derailed. One thing that I've gotten as a, um, uh, as an agreement from the city, the one thing I've been saying for quite some time now is if we're going to do a land swap with Scientology, and if there's one that makes sense, I'll do it. But Miscavige has to go first. He has to come through with everything before we give him this one property, the CMA property, the, the Marine Aquarium property that he lusts after. Right. Uh, we're holding on to that. And we're not selling it to him until he comes through with everything he's promised. And so far, the city has said, okay, Mark, that that's, that's our that's plan. Huge. That's huge. If I lose, yeah, but if I lose... That uh, you know that will be out the window, I'm sure. And you know, I'll just to remind, just to remind people, what we're talking about there is this little piece of land that David Miscavige covets so much. And my theory for it is that it's right up against the bungalows of the Fort Harrison Hotel, which is literally where they killed Lisa McPherson. And you showed me a, 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 a rendering at one point by one of the developers. They were literally going to set up that beer garden right there. And I just, I remember thinking to myself, one day, Mark Bunker and I are going to be able to have a beer and point to the literally the place where Scientology killed Lisa McPherson. That's well, what David Miscavige is going to do everything he can to keep that from happening. He wants that piece of land because he wants to keep outsiders away from that area. Uh, and, and you know, there's a whole history where the, the aquarium was going to use it. And then, and then he spoiled that. And then he tried to buy it. The city wouldn't let him have it. And he's just so angry at the city. So like you said, he may end up with that property at some point, but he's got to come through first. I just, I just still yeah. like the idea that someday you and I can have a beer and toast to poor Lisa McPherson and, and uh, you know, point tourists to where they can get a good picture near the bungalows. 
Yeah, I got to tell you, I want to see that advertising campaign. Come to our beer garden and enjoy the bungalow across the street. <laughs> okay. All right. I, <laughs> I don't know. I, that story, that be, story might put people off their beer, actually. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not the best place for a beer garden. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I still believe that Scientology tourism is a good idea. So I can see that fitting into it. Um, well, I, you know, I was just thinking about that. It's like, you know, you're you're one important thing to keep you there is that this this ongoing story about Mark Bunker and a lot of sensible people in Clearwater that want to, you know, stand up to this big bully. Uh, and, uh, you know, from the beginning, I remember when you were elected, you were saying, look, I've got this idea. We can just do what we want and ignore them for the most part. But there's also this side of it that, you know, there's the kind of let's go to the dueling piano bar, because if it's on Cleveland Street, you know, Tom Cruise's condo is across the way. You know, I mean, there's definitely that kind of tourism thing there going too, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing is that people are uh, people don't want to come downtown because of Scientology. It's radioactive. We hear that all the time. Uh, and in the it's not just me saying it. Uh, the piano bar guy uh, said it in a, a couple of meetings ago, saying, listen, we're, we're working on it. And we find out no one wants to come down here because of Scientology. <laughs> uh, so I've been trying everything I can to say it's safe. Look, look, I'm waving a red flag. I'm calling uh, uh, Miss Cabbage a tiny little tyrant in meetings. Uh, you know, he's ruthless. You know, I'm still kicking. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just it's come down, and enjoy that, a that meal. His strategy there is to buy up a lot of properties and just sit on them. But yeah. Now we see, you know, his ideal org program has started up again. And just in the last couple of weeks, he's opened three new ideal orgs in Austin, Texas, Mexico City, and uh, most recently in Chicago, Illinois. Do you have any thoughts about that, Mark, that uh, he's uh, got the expansion going again? Yeah, I got high hopes for Clearwater. Let's get an ideal org down there. Right across from the piano bar, they got that whole block. What better what better spot, Miss Cabbage? Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, you know, it's nice that they have palaces. It, it's kind of funny because the the uh, our last mayor quit mid meeting because we said, let's finally do the city hall that that we've had thirty million dollars sitting here for it since. Miss Cabbage started buying all these properties. Let's let's beat Miss Cabbage to the punch. Let's build our city hall finally with this thirty million dollars. And uh, Mayor Hibbard quit in the middle of a meeting and went on Fox News to say, "Oh, the council—they're so irresponsible. They're building a Taj Mahal to themselves." Well, it's no ideal org that we're building, <laughs> and it will be more useful to the people of Clearwater than an ideal org. Uh, you know, I, our building will be less lavish, but we'll have more people in it. And we'll be accomplishing some things rather than a great big empty uh, ideal org. Although I'd like to go in and push some buttons and play some videos. That'd be fun. Exactly. You know, that's what it's all about is those uh, Miscavige wants people to get attracted to Scientology through videos and monitoring and stuff. Next week, L. Ron Hubbard would have turned 113. What do you, what thoughts do you have on L. Ron Hubbard's birthday? And have you been invited to the birthday event? And where is it this year? Is it Ruth Eckert Hall again? I have not. I have not heard anything about it. Oddly enough, I don't get invited. And I keep offering. Every time that the city manager is going to sit down with uh, Sarah Heller, the bigwig here, or Ben Shaw, I'll say, yeah, I'll come. You know, the mayor can't make it. I'm the vice mayor. I'll be happy to come. Oddly enough, I'm never welcome. Um, but listen, I was just watching an old video uh, from one of my appearances bef before I was elected at the city council, uh, looking for some background stuff for uh, this reporter from Channel 8 who's doing a piece on the stolen signs today. 
And I'd forgotten. I'd gone to the the council and suggested, you know, you know what you need to do when you talk to Miscavige, you need to use tone forty. Point your finger at him and say, Miscavige, this is what we're doing. You're going to put something in those buildings now, and uh, and and curse at him because that's what he'll respect. Uh, I don't think they listen to me, but get that finger pointing. That's the most important thing. Um. And hey, listen, if the Scientologists decide they want to put businesses in these buildings, I'm fine with it. Allow a business to operate and don't uh, put your thumb on them. And, you know, that's perfect. There's there's several places. I eat at downtown pizza all the time. It's my favorite place to get a couple slices and a soda. The building's owned by Scientology. The, the people who run the restaurant they're not Scientologists and there's, you know, and it's a great place to go. Same with um, Clear Sky, even though it's got clear in the name of it, no Scientologists um, own or run that restaurant, even though it's one of Agami's buildings. Uh, as long as the Scientologists want to be good property owners and allow people to uh, start a business, make some income, pay some taxes to the city so we can improve the rest of the city. I'm fine with it. But this, this using it as leverage for eight years is criminal. And, and I keep making that point that Miscavige created a problem only he can solve. That's racketeering. Can I get the FBI or anyone else to, to take action? No, but I keep pushing. Well, and you remind me, uh, Moises Agami is a wealthy Mexico City uh, Scientologist who's uh, very active in Clearwater. And I think the last time we talked, we talked about this um, maneuver that Moises Agami made where he took advantage of the city council trying to encourage development by basically cutting some red tape. And so he took advantage of that to submit plans for some twin towers in Clearwater that were incredibly tall and everybody freaked out. What's the latest with that? They go halfway to the moon. It's amazing. <laughs> the, the, you know, seeing them uh, in, in drawings opposite the stuff that's there now, you go, well, geez, good Lord, what the heck is going on here? Um, I haven't heard anything more from it. Uh, 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 I'm sure he's still moving forward with it. I don't know where it is in, in the planning stages. Um, you would think he'd be able to, to make that happen. Um, you know, there, there's nothing stopping him now. Uh, there's nothing the city can do. Uh, he's, he's got the right to build them. So right. there and, you go. And I think, wasn't our theory that since uh, he built that ninth and 10th floor, double floor penthouse for Tom, that Dave, Dave cannot, he can't be, uh, you know, outdone. He's got to have, now he's got to have the penthouse in the new towers, which is even higher. So he's yeah. above Tom. So I think, I think that's what's going sure. on is Moises and, is doing and, something for Dave. And we know these are going to be major luxury condos, unlike the apartments we're building. Um, and they're, they're each going to be, I think, two floors uh, with uh, wraparound views, and they're going to cost a fortune. And it'll be wealthy Scientologists, you know, gobbling them up. Well, go ahead. Uh, it, it will bring some income to the city. Um, uh, you know, uh, nothing we can do to stop it. Um, I just wish they'd stop. Um, thwarting you know our progress um but but as i said we're 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 making headway and now the county uh has a lot of buildings downtown like the courthouse and uh all uh, we're, we're kind of right now the center of the county um so they have most of their properties here but they want to move out of downtown and and they found a, another place to build a big lavish Taj Mahal for themselves. Uh, so they're making sure that those properties that they're leaving 
wind up in the city's hands and not in Scientology's hands. So that's going to be a big help as well. So that's going to be a, a another large footprint that we can develop despite Scientology. And, and I'll say there are three buildings that David Miscavige promised to uh, restore to their original glory. One of them uh, they've been working on uh, and, you know, I don't know how long it's going to be before it's finished, but it's right across from city hall and they they've had workers out there every day and um, it's all hidden behind, you know, scrim right now. So we really can't see much of what's going on inside the designs, of course, look exactly like the beautiful videos that Scientology puts together for flag. Uh, so it's ornate and 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 you know it's going to be top of the uh, top of the line something, office space apparently. Uh, they say retail on the ground floor and and office space on the upper floors. Um, who's going to go in there? I don't know. Um, Will I be allowed in? Probably not. Uh, one of the three buildings um, on the other side of the street, they haven't started working on yet, but that's an old Woolworths. So they're actually recreating it with the Woolworth sign and making it look like a 1930s or 40s Woolworth. And uh, my thought is why? Because we're not having a Woolworth store in there. Why would you uh, want to confuse people? Oh, should we go shop at Woolworth? Oh, no, it's not Woolworth. It's, uh, what is it? Oh, it's a Scientology testing center? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, if they're going to recreate, if they're going to recreate a Woolworth from the 30s, is that going to include a whites only uh, counter sign there? Or, uh, it's... Tony, how dare you? <laughs> You know that L. Ron Hubbard did not have a racist bone in his body, except for. You know, I have to say that was to me that was the, the most disappointing thing about the Austin Ideal Org opening was. You know, I'm always curious to see what local dignitaries they convince to come give a speech, and uh, they're really getting desperate. Uh, in Austin, one of the four people was actually the local representative of the N NAACP. And if that wasn't bad enough, he went on and on about how L. Ron Hubbard was the greatest thing ever. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I, have you not seen his speech from South Africa? Have you not seen what he said about black South Africans? I mean, it's just incredible. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. What is your theory? I mean, you know, people always ask me, do they not Google Scientology? I think it's got to be something other than just that. I mean, how do they attract these people to give speeches? I don't think it's difficult. Because, um, you know, they're, they're going to spend some money in the community. Um, like uh, in North Greenwood, uh, Scientology uh, replaced the, the um, roof on the Martin Luther King Center, which is an important place for, for the area. Um, so there, um, so you, you go answer questions about Scientology there in a forum. Uh, they rip you to shreds. They did it to me uh, when I ran, and then Aaron ran uh, two years ago, and he didn't give up. They, they he kept saying Scientology. This last time when I when I went into their forum uh, a couple of months ago, I said, "Listen, I know you don't want to hear about uh, the name of this certain organization downtown." Uh, and referred to it like that. And they all kind of agreed with me. Yeah, that organization sucks. But um, but uh, they, you know, they're they're happy that they've got some money coming in from them uh, and getting something done. So who knows what uh, they have done for uh, the NAACP uh, down there in Austin. Uh, yeah. But yeah. chances are, he just read the the script that Scientology handed him and just said, well, OK, fine. Uh, look, I, this L. Ron Hubbard guy, he sounds like quite a guy. Let me uh, let me read this. Uh, and, and with no more thought than that, you know, I'm yeah. sure that there's, you know, every every council meeting we have um, 
these uh, proclamations for different groups, different days, and, and they're pretty much written by the people who are asking for them. And I, I showed how that worked back in 2000 or 2001 when the Concerned Businessmen of America contacted Clearwater's mayor and council and said, listen, we've been researching schools across the country and you've got one of the top schools here that we want to acknowledge. We're awarding this school this magnificent prize. And would you please uh, read a proclamation? And <clears throat> by the way, send us three copies of it because we want one for the better businessmen of, uh, and we want one for the school and one for the files. So, you know, I went in and explained, well, this is a Scientology front group trying to get you to make a proclamation for a Scientology school so they can put it up in the school and say, look how much good we do here in the city. The mayor loves us. The city council, they think we're terrific. Hey, bring your kids here. Um, and that's the game they play. Um, and, and I'm sure, you know, it's the same way when they, they invite someone to come and speak at one of their events. Read the speech. That's all you need to know. And people read the speech. And it's, um, I'm glad but, you explained that that's how that works because it, it really backfired on them recently there in Florida. There's a town, Deltona, which is about 30 miles north of Orlando. Oh, yeah. And uh, same thing. They Somebody submitted, uh, somebody from New York actually submitted a request uh, you know, L. Ron Hubbard is the greatest author of all time. Can you please announce March 13th as L. Ron Hubbard Day? And the mayor was like, okay, get it done. You know, just like he didn't have time. Well, you know, now, thanks to you and Leah Remini and various other people, there's more awareness. And on one of the residents or more than one of the residents was like, hey, mayor, what are you doing? L. Ron Hubbard Day in 2024? Are you kidding me? And and yeah. this mayor's gotten a lot of heat, but I I want people to see that he did the right thing. Once it was brought to him that this was an outrage, he cut it off. He said, "No, I'm rescinding that. It's no longer be Elron Hubbard Day." Then it became a news story, and uh, you know, it's the mess. It's it's the it's the it's the you know flub that becomes the news story, which is great, and which is also with your signs. It's like these guys thought. They were striking a blow for Scientology, and it's just turned into this big story for you. You know, well timed, a week and a half out from the election. Uh, but yeah, same thing. I'm sure they just these, the, you know, the mayor in Deltona must get five of these a day, and says, "Oh, okay, May, you know, March 13th, hour and number day, fine, get it done." You know, that is exactly. And even like though there was, said. yeah, even though there was news coverage uh, uh, of. Uh, him being embarrassed about it it'll happen in another city you know they'll keep doing it they'll keep uh looking for l Ron hubbard days everywhere they can can we rename a street for him uh that that would be a, a big honor because you know he's he's uh one of the greatest authors ever and a friend of mankind we got a block here in front of your ideal org. Okay, sure. It's l Ron that hubbard. that proclamation they wanted that mayor to to put out said that Dianetics was the most important book written about the human mind ever. Well, there you go. Well, why wouldn't you uh, want to have an L. Ron Hubbard day in that case? For God's sakes, give the man some credit, will you? I have to tell you, I'm very curious about the birthday event uh, because a big feature of it in recent years was Dan Sherman, the official biographer of Hubbard, spinning these wild tales? I actually, you know, years earlier, it was a little easier to get the videos, but we actually got some video of him talking about, at one point, they basically credited Hubbard with saving the world from nuclear destruction in the 1940s. Uh, what have they got going now? Who's up there spinning well, the tales now? Well, wait a minute. Did the world end in a nuclear cataclysm in the 40s give the guy some credit for god's sakes i know i know he's we're just you know i'm around. i'm certain this 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 l ron hubbard guy was terrific it's it's miscavige that's the problem
Well, um, I'm really curious to see if he gets out to Paris this weekend because, you know, he's gotten those other three ideal orgs opened in time to show video for the birthday event. But if he's mm -hmm. going to do that with Paris, it's got to be this weekend. So you you may, you know, you may lose him from Florida altogether for a few days. Well, that would be a shame. <laughs> I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to close down City Hall. No business for a week. You know, it, let's all sit down and, and uh, think about the greatness of L. Ron Hubbard. And then we'll come back to work. Well, uh, I, I don't know. It, it looks like Scientology is hurting. Uh, you know that opening these ideal orgs is just a way to try to convince wealthy members that it's not hurting. But I think it's absolutely crucial for that town that it keeps Mark Bunker uh, on that city council keeping vigilant. and Because you know, the minute Scientology can make these swaps to its benefit they'll do it but thankfully you're there keeping things going yeah yeah we got another uh candidate running against me who says he's going to be tough on scientology but he's not and he was recruited by our former mayor to take me out and one of the things is you got to say you're tough on scientology he he uh, actually uh is a partner with them in amplify clearwater our chamber of commerce is he doing anything about Scientology downtown from that position? No. Well, we no. talked about that before. You had asked, you would raise the question, why why does Scientology get a table at that, you know, event anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that, you know, his signs are still all over town. So they don't see him as a threat. Right. Um, anyway. Well, we've done what we can. The people of Clearwater should have heard about this one way or the other from the Tampa Bay Times or whatever. They should know what you're about, what your record is. And like I said, I you I know, I've so. told you before, I've just been real impressed at what you've done there in that office, aside from Scientology. You've clearly learned about the town, you care about things like street safety. You know, you 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 care about making the place a better place to live. So yeah. I hope voters take that into consideration, man. And we'll be rooting for you yeah. on March 19th. Go vote, people. Thank you. Uh, it's probably a little too late for you to move to Clearwater. <laughs> but it, it, if you want to still come in four years, I can run for mayor. And I lived in this I, term. I lived in Florida in 2005 to 7 I'm a California guy you got to understand Florida does I don't know how other Californians feel about it but it's Florida's not my cup of tea I had a great it's time muggy. there yeah. What's that? It's muggy That's my biggest Look, problem I love going to the beach in January I'll admit that I love going to the beach in January but but uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite place in the world. But I do like to visit. I hope I get to visit you soon. And uh, we'll have a beer at that beer garden. That's what I'm looking forward to. You're always welcome. I'll book you a room at the Fort Harrison. <laughs> don't forget to ask at the uh, desk, uh, where's Shelly? Oh, it's God. a fun interactive mystery game that they have going. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay. All right, sir. Thank you so much. I know you're super busy. This story is hot. Go give some more interviews, and we'll look forward to the news next week. All right? All right. Thanks so much. Always fun chatting with you. Talk to you later, Mark. Bye.